Cookie Monsters. So today I'm going to be doing my Alice in Wonderland book collection part four. I can't believe I've been doing this for over four years, but here we are. Um, I don't have as many books to show you as I did in previous parts, but if you're totally new to this collection, basically I started out collecting different versions of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. It kind of grew into a larger collection than just that, so I do have other works by Lewis Carroll and about Lewis Carroll or like about Alice without being a retelling or retellings. I have so many different things that are connected to Alice Wonderland and Lewis Carroll. And I also have some non-book items to show you. I'm really excited, but what I think I'm gonna do is this time, instead of just focusing on me, like holding up the book, I think I'm gonna just turn you guys around and focus much more straight up on the books so that you can see way more detail. I'm so excited about the ones I have to show you this time. It's 17 books and I'm just like, you guys are gonna love these. Some of them are so unique and I'm so happy I have them. Once I put all the books back, I can show you guys how the new setup looks. It's not. So different but I do need to figure out where all the new ones I just got will go so let's get started okay so in front of you are all the new Alice books and as you can see it's a lot <laughs> so we're gonna go through all of them and I'm so excited so many of these are just so incredible okay so the first one actually the first two are from the same like publisher, illustrator. Most of these are from Book Outlet, so this is. And as you can see, it's like a kind of creepy version of Alice. Everyone just kind of looks like a doll that could kill you, but I kind of love it. So this is published by Carlton Kids, and it's terrifying. Let's be real, but it's just also kind of amazing. So all the characters are like on the inside cover flap, and then as you go through, it's like, you know, the story but with all these crazy illustrations now this one is actually through the looking glass as you can see so it's not the most familiar story oh my god wait a second I did not realize it had this I literally just realized this right now it has these little flaps look with the talking flowers okay I did not know this I had looked at this book before but I did not notice these little flappy things oh my gosh so obviously we've got Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Yeah, I kind of love this. It's amazing. So pretty, like the colors and oh, look at that. Look at that pop up. It's so pretty. So I really like this one. And like I said, it's from Book Outlet, but this one, as you can see, is in the same style, also by Carlton Kids. And this is the Alice in Wonderland creativity book. So this one is meant to be like a whole activity book for kids. And this one's based on the first Alice in Wonderland book. So it's got like the wire binding over here. And then there's all these different activities. So like stencils, um like coloring things you attach different things to the labels like the eat me stuff finding things filling things out um this is obviously the caucus race i just think it's really cute and it's a little bit less creepy than the other one but still kind of creepy in an amazing way so it's really really cute and this was also from book outlet and i bought it at the same time all right so the next two books are Queen of Hearts and Blood of Wonderland by Colleen Oakes. So this is a series. I think there is also a third book. So it's book one and book two in the series. And I had been eyeing these for so long that when I finally saw them on Book Outlet, I like snatched them right up. And I think that's the main reason I made the order. So I don't know anything really about these other than that it's a retelling. It says evil is rising in Wonderland. Um, but I don't really know what it's about and I don't really want to until I get to it. But look how pretty the back artwork is. So without knowing anything about it, this is what it looks like without the dust jacket. And I don't really know what that means, obviously, but it's still really pretty. And then Blood of Wonderland says it's a Queen of Hearts novel. So obviously the series is called Queen of Hearts. This girl kind of reminds me of Daenerys Targaryen, if you know what I'm saying. And this is what the back artwork looks like on the second book and let's see what says the same thing but it's red even if I hate these honestly like I'm glad to own them because they're so pretty and the odds aren't great because I tend to be very critical of retellings but we never know so let me know if you guys have read this retelling of Alice in Wonderland the next two books also go together these are Disney's Timber in like live action CGI Alice in Wonderland and Alice through the looking glass books 
So the first one, as you can see, is purple. The edges of the pages are deckled. I don't know if you guys can tell. It basically is just telling the Disney version story in a book version. There are some like drawings, but not very many. It's mostly just the story. Like you get a little bit of illustrations. Like, that? like that's, you know, the Queen of Hearts. But for the most part, it's just the book. And then the second book is this more like maroony color and it's got like the clock artwork all over and then an image from the second movie which I didn't even watch. It's a lot thicker but still has the deckled edges and then I don't think this has any illustrations. Oh no it does. It, I think it actually has more. So I know this character is called Time even though I haven't seen the movie. Um, so it's actually got some pretty nice artwork. I think the first one has a lot less. Um, yeah, Mostly the Time artwork but there's a little bit here and there that's obviously our good old friend, the Mad Hatter. Um, but yeah, I can't really speak to how good these books are because I just got them for the collection. Um, I don't know if they're good. I guess if you like the movies, they're probably good. Also from Book Outlet, we've got this uh, version. It's really basic. I really only got it because it was like under $2. I'm pretty sure a lot of different versions have this particular artwork on the front. This is actually a Books of Wonder version, which is interesting because that's like a New York City children's bookstore. The only like super nice thing about it is this gold embossing on the pages. Otherwise, it's just got the normal Tenniel kind of illustrations. It's kind of got like shiny paper. I don't know if you guys can like see, but it's like that almost soft laminated kind of feel, but it's not like that interesting to add to the collection. Um, and then without the cover flap, it looks exactly the same. Another kind of boring one is this one. Actually, I think this one might have been like a couple of dollars and then the other one was maybe like three, four dollars. So as you guys can see, this is that like important scene at the end where all the cards like rise up against Alice at the trial right before she wakes up. So it's like not that exciting, ten years long, all that, but it was cheap and cute. So I bought it and then I was like, because I kind of stared at it for a while, like, do I own this one? I wasn't sure. And then I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I don't. So I ordered it. And then when it came, I was like, you know what? It reminds me of one I do own though. And that's probably why I was confused. Anyway, if you guys want to see a conspiracy theory, look at this. So you see how they're like the same scene and they both have 10 illustrations inside, but they're clearly different. Like her entire dress looks different. Her apron looks different. One has a bow in her hair. One doesn't. Like the characters also like look slightly different. Like this one has like grass in the background and this one doesn't like... Mainly Alice looks different, but even if you start looking in at the cards, there's like more cards in this one. I don't really know what this is. Like maybe it's very possible that like one of them is an earlier draft of Tenniel illustrations. This one to the right kind of looks like a more finished version to me, like more polished version. And I'm going to guess that's what the difference is, but I don't actually know and I've never come across this before. Or like I probably just never noticed it before. But that's kind of weird, right? So this is the Barnes & Noble Signature Collection. And this one is officially a Bantam Classic one. I don't know what's going on here. Like, I just don't know. So let me know if you guys know anything about this, because that's kind of weird. While we're doing books that have partners, I want to show you this Alice's Puzzles Through the Looking Glass. It says, a Frabjous puzzle challenge inspired by Lewis Carroll's classic fantasy. This is by Jay Ward. And as you can see, this got this like, um, embossing here and this gold all over here. It's super nice. So this is also by Carlton Books. And when I looked at it, I was like, this looks kind of familiar, but I'm pretty sure I don't own this. Kind of like that other one. And so I double checked in my collection and I don't own this one, but I do own a similar one. And that is a puzzle collection from Alice in Wonderland. So I showed this in my part two of my collection and it's called Alice's Puzzles in Wonderland. It's not by the same person. This is by R.W. Galland, but it's also, as you can see, by Carlton Books. So this one is, I guess, mainly puzzles based on the first book. And then this one is mainly puzzles based on the second book, but this is way heavier because it's, it's obviously the full size one. And similar to the other one, um, basically there's all these different like puzzles and like riddles and stuff like that. And um, then you go to the back to, this is like a spot the difference. Um, what, like some of these are just straight up riddles and it says like go to the back to this page to find the answer. I just think it's done so well. Like it has such pretty illustrations and borders and like, it's just so pretty. I honestly haven't really done any of these. I really should sit down one day and like 
do all the riddles but I just think it's so great for a collection because it's like so different and it obviously fits right in with the theme of Alice and riddles and all that and as you guys know I love these inside like cover things that have um, cute patterns on them. So obviously these are the suits in a deck of cards and it's just really cute. This first story's Alice in Wonderland is so unexpectedly fun. It's by Campbell and look at this. Okay, it's basically like you move the little tabs to make things change. So as you can see, Alice is um, holding a flamingo here and then this is a little hedgehog that she's using to play croquet. And then there's a two of spades who is painting the roses red. When you pull the little tab, he paints the roses red and the hedgehog runs away from her. And that's basically the entire book. It's obviously meant for little children, but I had the best time going through this book. So I'll go through it with you guys now because it's obviously really short because it's a little cardboard book. Um, so what you do on this page is you put your finger in the hole and you go like this and Alice falls down the rabbit hole. Look at that, it's amazing so fun and i really think little kids would really love this like it's so smart okay so basically when you pull the tab here look what happens she shrinks <gasps> i love it all right and then for the mad tea party what you do is i think you like turn this little knob thingy and like the dormouse has all these little z's to show that he's sleeping and then like the colors coming out of the steam uh, teacup like change color. I don't know. It's really cute. And then I think this is the last page. So you do that little move it like this thing again. And she like basically moves the uh, hedgehog. It's really cute. Well, I'm sorry you guys can see the light glare from my light. Woo. But that's the entire book. This one was also from Book Outlet. And I think it's so freaking cute. And they have also like other classic stories. Obviously, I just care about Alice. But I think kids would really like this. This is another kids version that I recently got. And I ordered it just because I saw I didn't own it but once I got it I was like oh my goodness I love it it's obviously it says Walt Disney so I thought maybe like the cover was different but inside it was just going to be like more of the like classic Disney animation but it's totally not as you can see it's retold by John I think it's pronounced Siesca but I'm not totally sure and then the pictures are by Mary Blair as you can see the illustrations are really really cute they look like paintings and like it's just so sweet but what I didn't realize is that it's retold by him and he's really funny. I've shown once before, like I got, he's like retellings of like the stinky cheese man and like the real tale of the three little pigs. And um, he also wrote the Time Warp Trio, which is a children's like series about these three boys that like go back in time and they're all really like sarcastic and funny. And as a kid, I love them. So not only do you get these like great illustrations and this great inside cover art, you get to see it told in like his kind of funny, sarcastic manner. So, um, let's see. The artwork is just beautiful. Like it kind of says like here, the rabbit hole was either very deep or she was falling very slowly because as Alice fell, she had time to review most of her spelling words, 72% correct, recite her two poems poorly, say all of her seven times tables all wrong before landing with a gentle thump. Um, and it's just kind of told in like, like that kind of sarcastic way that he's into. It's not as like funny as some of this other stuff, but let's see. It is still telling the story from the point of view of like the Disney movie. So it has things that are in like through the looking glass, you know what I mean? Like the, the talking flowers and stuff. Um, like she's a weed the nasty flowers chased Alice out of their garden it's kind of funny I think it's cute and like I said I love this artwork look how cute they are oh my gosh so yeah this one was a really really great find okay this one is obviously value priced, but it's actually from Book Outlet, like all the rest of them. This one is, it says based on the original story, so it's obviously like retold or just like condensed, and it's illustrated by Erin McGuire. So it's retold by Katherine Allison, and the publisher is Paragon Books. And it's just like, you know, nice artwork. I like it, it's different. I just like anything new and different when it comes to Alice instead of the same old boring stuff. I really like this. 
you can see it's like pretty colorful and fun. This one people have been telling me to buy in the comments of my Alice collections for years. It's Alice by Christina Henry. I assume that it's like a terrifying, you know, kind of freaky retelling. Um, I think it's, that's all I really know though, because that's, I haven't read it yet, but yeah, as you can see, there's blood on it. And I do think there's like more in this series, but I don't know if all of them have to do with Alice. I think they have to do with like other retellings. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. It's like a fantasy retelling. I kind of stumbled on this one. This is called Mad Hatters and March Hares. And it's edited by Ellen Datlow, but what it is is basically um, short stories that are inspired from the world of Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland. And I'll turn it to the back so I can read out like all the authors that are part of this, but I did not even realize that's what it was when I first got it. And I'm really excited. I don't usually like short story collections, but hopefully I'll like this one. So these are all the authors that are part of it. We've got Richard Bowes, C.S.C. E. Cooney, Chris Dykeman, Andy Duncan, Jeffrey Ford, Stephen Graham Jones, Matthew Kressel, Seanan McGuire, Priya Sharma, Delia Sherman, Angela Slater, Catherine M. Valint, Genevieve Valentine, Catherine Vaz, Karen Warren, Isabu S. Wilth, and Jane Yolden. I apologize if I said any of those names incorrectly. But yeah, that's the basis of this and I actually never heard of it. So I'm so glad I found this on Book Outlet. So I also have this Alice's Adventures in Wonderland um, Macmillan, like Alice 150 collection coloring book. I'll be honest, this is probably like the least interesting of all of the Alice coloring books I own. I showed three in my part three of my collection. And I'll be honest, like this is not as interesting because those had like original artwork and this is all based off Tenniel, but it still does get interesting. So first of all, we've got this like big cover flap thing that's kind of cool. Um, it's mostly just Tenniel drawings, but like some extra stuff kind of added around it. So I just don't think it's as interesting to like color, but it's still like a variation on that. Um, and kind of like gets into like the surreal aspect of Alice. Um, but it is really cool still, like as you can see. Um, some of it's just regular scenes and some of it's like themes from the book. So like that's just like a normal scene kind of. Um, my favorite one I think is this one. <laughs> it's like ooh. But yeah, I just like this and yeah. Now I have like five, four or five, I don't remember. I have a lot of Alice coloring books and I'm really liking that trend when it comes to Alice. I saved this one for last because it's probably my favorite one. Like it's probably in my top five favorite ever and I think it's my favorite one in this particular video. This is The Hunting of the Snark by Lewis Carroll which is illustrated by Chris Riddle. And when I saw the illustrations, I immediately thought of Fortunately the Milk by Neil Gaiman, which everyone was talking about years ago. I still haven't read it, but I looked it up and he actually did illustrate the American version of that. So I'm just obsessed with it. Basically what it is, is a poem told in seven parts about all these different characters hunting a creature called Snark. Obviously this is the Snark. And I just think the, the poem is amazing. It's just so Lewis Carroll. It's just funny and like just random and just fun but the illustrations really make this so much better. Like they add so much. It's like you wouldn't get the same story without these illustrations. So I don't know if you guys can see, but all the characters are in this circle and then their names are in it. So the bellman is like this guy and then it says boots, banker, broker, barrister, butcher, beaver, baker, uh, billiard maker, and bonnet maker. And they're all on that ship and they're going to hunt the snark. The pages are also like this metallic blue that's really pretty. And I'm going to show you guys the illustrations because I read this over the weekend. I had never read The Hunting of the Snark before and I was literally so entertained because it was so good. So first of all on the inside cover we've got this illustration of snarks. And if you've read um, Alice Through the Looking Glass and you know the poem Jabberwocky, a lot of the same words are used like Mimsy, Bower Groves, you know, Outgrave, all of that. And then they also kind of talk about like the Jubbub bird and all these different things in this too. So it's really interesting, but it's basically a whole story. And then like 
different parts kind of focus on different characters. And I won't give away the ending, but I kind of saw it coming. Um, but it's, it's so fun. So obviously some of them are just pencil or pen drawings. And then some are also colored in. Let's see what are some of my favorites. Like, look at that snark. Um, and it's just a funny story. Like, look at this one. Oh my goodness. And you can totally read this in like one sitting and the rhyming and everything is just so wonderful and fun and I love it. So that is it for all of the books from Book Outlet. I only have one more book left and then I have just like non-book items to show you. This is the last book. It's an English Spanish version of Alice in Wonderland. I got this in Peru. Obviously you don't have to get these in Peru. You can get them probably anywhere but I wanted to get one because when I travel I like to get ones in the local language and I was about to buy one in Spanish when I was like okay this is gonna be my third one in Spanish. It's probably better to get one that's like Spanish English and that's like a good way to kind of like learn a language is when you like read something you're already really familiar with and then it like helps you because you already kind of know what the words should be so it helps you learn better. I don't know that I'll necessarily use this to learn Spanish but I thought that was a little bit different than just getting another one in Spanish because they didn't have any that were like that interesting to me. So as you can see this doesn't have any like um, illustrations but the cover does have that tenniel drawing and then um, obviously this is Spanish and English like across from each other. Okay so now we're on to non-book Alice things. I got this from my friend Whitney from Witty Novels. She got me this and it's so nice of her. It's this like first of all I've never seen this illustration ever and it's just like a journal and it's like magnetic on the side so you open it up and it's just like line pages but I'm just like obsessed with like this metallic kind of pewter color and this like totally different illustration of the tea party. It's kind of terrifying but amazing. So thank you so much Whitney. So I got this for myself. It is a set of four like kind of magnetic clip-on page clips that you can use to like hold your place instead of a bookmark. They're so freaking cute. As you can see it's Alice, the White Rabbit, the um, Mad Hatter, and the Queen, and they're so cute. So yeah, I think the brand is called Free Marks, and I just think it's really cute. Honestly, I'm never gonna use these because I just think it's kind of annoying to use, and I'd rather just kind of show them off in their little package. Okay, so this I actually got from my cousin. It's these Wonderland sticky notes. She got them for me for my birthday last year, um, and as you can see, they're like while you were down the rabbit hole, so it's like something you can keep at your desk. It actually accidentally came with like a whole bunch of them, even though it was supposed to only come with one. So I do keep one on my desk at work, but I also keep like three of them on my um, Alice shelf. And then as you can see, there's some other ones. So the Caterpillar, hum uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum, and the Cheshire Cat. So it's really cute. So my friend got me these Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass Temporary Literary Tattoos. I love temporary tattoos, but I probably won't use these because they're just too cool. But like, look at that walrus, the time has come. It's amazing. Twas Billig and the Slithy Tubs. There's just like all these really cute designs. And I think it's so nice. Thank you to my friend. I also don't know if it's like where to show you guys these, but the same friend got me these socks at a store called Alice on Wednesday, which is this like Alice in Wonderland themed store in Tokyo. As you can see, it's like embroidered on the sock, Alice on Wednesday, and they've got these little bows and like all these different like Things. They're not like perfect anymore because you know they've been worn but yeah they're basically these really cute socks with all this like Alice stuff on it. Okay and then now, last but not least I've got my like Disney enamel pins. So this one I got at Disney World. It was kind of expensive. I don't know if it was worth it but like it totally was worth it. It's basically Alice holding this little bottle that says drink me and it's like got like blue glitter so it looks like water. It's so cute because like the bottle is literally the size of her. And I just love it. It's got that like Tim Burton font on it. I love this. And then I have two more that I received from My Secret Santa. All right, so these are the two I got from My Secret Santa. Um, obviously this is the Cheshire Cat and then this is the Queen and King of Hearts. Underappreciated character, the King of Hearts, right? Um, so they're so cute and I think it was really nice of her to give me these. 
So these also go on my shelf. That's kind of everything. And then I'll show you guys the whole shelf as it looks with everything in it. Okay guys, so I'm gonna show you um, my collection as it looks on its bookshelf. So a lot of it is very similar to how it was in part three last year. And um, I just rearranged a bunch of it now. So to start off, this collection is on the same bookshelf as some of my Broadway stuff. So I've got like Puff stuff. Then this is not Broadway, but it's Star Wars. This, which I got from my Secret Santa, it's like a Playbill holder. This is for my Puff's cosplay, Broadway stuff, and all of my Playbills. We can do another video about that, some more Playbills. And then everything else is Alice, except not that. So I showed um, this before. It's a little like watch clock um, post-it set my sister got me. This Disney version teapot, which has a Dormouse Tsum Tsum and a plush Funko Mad Hatter. I've got the little temporary tattoos I showed you before behind here. This is an art print I showed you guys. I got this at Comic-Con and then I got this bookmark at Comic-Con too. So most of these are not books as you guys can see, but I do have this book up here and then these two like original Alice books, the first ones I ever had up here. Alice Funko, the Morgan Museum where it had a, an Alice exhibit and then this tiny little cute version the tag to my like Alice pajamas. And then a couple things I didn't show you guys yet. When I got all these little Alice things from my secret Santa, she had like little cards to tell you like which one to open. So this looks like the Queen of Hearts dress. And then this says all in the golden afternoon. This is the Cheshire cat. So she handmade all of these and I thought they were so cute. So I hung them up next to my collection. And this is gonna be hard to see cause it's like laminated, but it's basically like sheet music and then like Kind of photoshopped Alice artwork that makes it look like they're all riding together on a bike. I got this from this shop I really really love. I'm gonna put the link to it below because I don't want to get the name wrong or I'll put it on the screen. Um, they mostly make like fandom jewelry but they do have some artwork stuff and I got this at Broadway Con but they're at like most conventions like I've seen them around. They're really really cute. All right so that's the top and then we've got the first shelf which is mostly the same. It's mostly just for the big books, the anthologies, this middle section with all these small books that are all blue and yellow is exactly the same as before. We've got three Tsum Tsums there. And then my um, Heartless like arc is back there. And then this part kind of changed because I added a couple more tall ones and then moved a couple that could fit on the lower shelves down. So it has a little bit more room, but for the most part is kind of still the same. The second shelf has changed completely. Before I had like kind of a section in the middle where certain books were like, you know, facing forward so you could see the front. And I just, I just got rid of that. And I used to have all my retellings and stuff on the left, on the right side. And now it's on the left side. So that's like this. And then these are just kind of small, similar shaped, similar sized um, books. They're like a lot of them over here are from either from foreign countries or in foreign languages. And then I had this little space. So I stuffed these three Tsum Tsums here. It kind of looks crazy, but it kind of looks cute. Um, and then that giant anthology over there at the end. Um, and then all the way at the bottom, it's kind of the same, kind of different. This was on that second shelf before in the middle. Um, have I shared it to you guys? I don't remember. As you can see, it's a snow globe and it spins around. Woo! It is from Disney World and it was a present from my sister. Um, and then what I like about this shelf is that the ones in the back are like these tall, thick books. And then in the front, I've just got like stacks of smaller books. Those sticky notes are over there, more Tsum Tsums, a mug with a um, book depository bookmark, that little pin I showed you. Oh shoot, I didn't put those other pins back. Where did those go? Um, Sorry, I just realized I didn't put those other pins back there, so I just stuck them down there. But yeah, we've got all these little stacks. I put the two puzzle books next to each other over there. That other one that Whitney got me, I like, so I put that out there. That little uh, manga style one is out there. And then the cover to the um, teapot, the little bookmarks, another Tsum Tsum. Um, so yeah, there's just so many. There are like here, like big anthologies in the bottom and then like kind of similar color spines. Um, anything I didn't mention? I don't know. I think this is it. This is all of it. What do you guys think? What do y'all think? So that's it for my Alice in Wonderland book collection part four. If you guys have any comments or questions, of course you can leave them below. Let me know what your favorites were. If you collect any books, I'd love to hear about it. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.